This tutorial explains how to compare character strings using logical conditions in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the two character strings that we can create with lines two to six of the code. So in line two of the code, I'm creating the first character string. So after running this line of code, you can see that at the top right, a new string object appears, which is called string one. And if we print this string to the RStudio console by running line three of the code, you can see that our character string is a vector containing three character string elements. Our second character string vector can be created by running line five of the code. So after running this line, another character string vector appears at the top right, which is called string two. And we can print this string to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line six of the code. And then you can see that our second character string also contains three character string elements. However, the elements of this second vector are different compared to the first vector. So let's assume that we want to use some R code to compare these two vectors. Then one very useful operator is the in operator, as you can see in line eight of the code. So in front of the in operator, we need to specify the first character string. And after the in operator, we need to specify the second character string. So if you run line eight of the code, you can see at the bottom that a logical output was created. And these logical values tell us that the first character string in the first vector is not contained in the second character string vector. So in other words, the character string hey is not contained in the second character string. However, the second character string yo is contained in the second character string and the third character string in the first vector hello is not contained in the second character string vector. So we can also return the character strings that are contained in the second vector by using line 10 of the code. So in this line of code, I'm using the same syntax as in line eight. However, I'm using this logical condition to subset our first character string using square brackets. So if you run line 10 of the code, you can see that the character string yo is returned. And this is the character string that exists in the first character string and also in the second character string. Now we can also use the if else function, as you can see in line 12 of the code to compare our character strings. And in this case, I'm returning the character string yes, in case the element of the first character string is contained in the second character string and the character string no, in case an element of the first vector is not contained in the second vector. So if you run line 12 of the code, you can see that another vector is returned, which says no, yes, no. And this tells us that the second element is contained in the second vector, but the other two elements are not contained in the second vector. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.